Sin City, otherwise known as Las Vegas, located in the middle of the desert, surrounded by mountain ranges, known for its casinos and glittering nightlife. It is a city that never sleeps, but under all of the bright lights, the glamour and the glow, I learned that all that glitters is not gold. One of the people that chose the Metropolitan Police to discriminate against the homeless. And uh, I'm going to start right in the front with them like that. You know, I'm good because it's going to do what's right thing to do. They click on us, the mayor goes on TV and says, hey, they're trying to clean up their city and throw away the trash, get rid of the trash. Don't count the homeless with money or food or not, or they're going to start buying them. We're human beings. They're calling us trash. We're Americans, you know, we're trash. And wrong. Uh, you got these billion dollar casinos that sit right above uh, one of the most populated tunnels, you know what I mean? You, you never really know. Um, there's another tunnel right right back this way, you know? Uh, so that houses like 30 people, man, at a time, you know? It's a tunnel and there's like 30 people down there at any given moment, you know? And uh, you got these billion dollar casinos just standing there. We continue to show up down here in these tunnels week after week just to show them like because we got to build their trust they don't know us from adam when we first come down here and we're exploring uh and finding new tunnels and new people and they're always evolving there's always people coming in and out of these places you know uh people end up going back to jail or whatever you know they'll, they'll get tickets and stuff and they're not able to 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 remember to go down to these court dates and you know, there, there's plenty of things that apply to this, you know, and uh, so it's you got to build their trust. You got to continue to show up. You got to continue to build a rapport with them. So, like, when you tell, because most of them, I know when, when people would tell me something, when I was under the illusion of, of drugs and alcohol that like it was a setup they're coming after me they want to take me to jail they're gonna they're trying they're trying to pull something on me you know whether whatever it may be you know and 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 in time you know we they build that trust you know um by continuing to show up and just talking to them you know um and the, it, just remind them you know this is what we're doing if you ever want out this is the way out on saturday september 15th 2018 Shine a Light allowed my camera and I to follow them on one of their missions through the tunnels. We prepared to enter the tunnels, stocking up on bottled waters, socks, batteries, and food to pass out to the tunnel residents. It was mid-September, so the 100 degree temperature paled in comparison to the prior summer months, with highs reaching 114 degrees. As we began to venture into the tunnels, I couldn't help but feel a sense of guilt that at one time I had partied and danced on the rooftops of these residents, like so many others unknowingly, ignorant to their existence, ignorant of these tunnels they call home.
so that's a part of this valley, right? So these flood drains were actually created um, to help because what would happen is large flash floods would come and it would flood out the whole city. So these tunnels, um, which are actually uh, water drains that, to direct the water into certain basins. Um, so people started living down here because it doesn't rain that much down here. Um, and what would happen is like when it would rain with people and everybody down here is it starts filling up really fast because all the water is directed into certain tunnels, you know what I mean? Um, so it end up washing everything out, you know? Um, and, it, and it continues to happen every, every time it rains. You know, August is actually the worst month out here because it's monsoon season. Um, and it, it literally takes everything out. It's like a sweep. So what happens to the people and all their belongings? Sometimes they, they can salvage a couple things, but most of it all gets washed out to the basin. You know, and then they got to start all over again mountain the edge of the mountain and so like if it rains in the mountains there's no warning next thing you know there's water coming through your, your channel because it rained out there and so like it's really kind of like you have to learn how to adapt and survive and what locations are better than others and then it just leave it all to chance like last year this tunnel got washed out three or four times this year it hasn't been touched yet Like there's really no telling where that comes from and so what these are designed for is that like this might go all the way up to some street so when that street starts to pick up water it dumps into the inlets that dump into the channels so there's a lot more of these size tunnels in town than there are these these are the basins the crabs these are the ones that take the big bodies of water but these are throughout the entire city and they dump them into these I've crawled through there. Yes, people sleep in there. They they set camps up in there, like little beds, and they'll sleep in there. I've crawled through them. I had crazy intentions when I lived in <laughs> I crawled through one that it ended on me, and I had to crawl through backwards to get out. He gave it away. No, no, no. No, that's not the No, My name is Tracy Ponting, and I moved out here in 2000, 2010. Meet Tracy. He's from Arizona. He's been homeless in Las Vegas for the last two years. His father recently passed away, and ironically, his father's death has given him hope for the future. Tracy is looking forward to a fresh start in his life. And I went to jail and I got released out here and I don't have no family so I went into a drug program and uh, I'm doing decent I mean got my own place and I worked for a couple years and then my landlady's mother passed away and she sold the properties and I've been homeless for since 2013 and then I ran into an old friend and they lived out here and I moved in with them and everything was going good and then I started doing drugs again and got evicted on uh, 2016 and I've been out here ever since just trying to get back to where I was a few years ago. Uh, my father just passed away a couple of weeks ago uh, so I went back home to my mom in Arizona and I'm getting ready to go back home in a couple of days, so at least I'm gonna get that start again to, to get back off the street and, and get everything where I need to be. So I had a girl, she just tore me apart and I lost all hope in, in living and, and everything, but uh, my dad passed away and it brought, brought a lot of hope into my life. Uh, made me open up my eyes real big for me and for my kids. I mean, my kids mean a lot to me, so. And my dad dying really opened up my eyes a lot. 
but I'm, I'm going to be moving back to Arizona probably in two days, three days. So I won't be out here no more. So that'll be like your first start. Yeah. Where do your kids live? Texas and California. And how long have you been living in the tunnels? <coughs> mm. Off and on for about two years. There's too many homeless out here, but it's it's a tourist state. That's why. I mean, come ups. That's they they come out here in the summertime and then they go back to California or wherever they're from in the winter. I mean, it's like uh, what do they call them? The, uh, snowbirds. Uh, they come out for a couple months and some of them go back home and some of them just stay out here, get stuck in the system. Mm -hmm. Everybody was wondering why everybody's getting evicted. I'm like, rent's going up and you're still paying us nine dollars an hour. I mean, there ain't nothing you can do out there. It's ridiculous. So my brothers and sisters and all them, they're moving back to Arizona because they can't afford it out in California. And my brother's an attorney and Long Beach, California is an attorney and he can't even afford his rent. So it's ridiculous. And out here too, rent's ridiculous out here. It's it's cheaper to live in a tunnel when you work, you know, it's Sometimes it's safer to be on the street than it is to be in a house or an apartment. <clears throat> but it depends on where you live, I guess. I don't know. Vegas. Nah, Vegas is not good no more. I don't like Vegas no more. Just to visit, not to live. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> tourist. If I was a tourist, it'd be all right, I guess. But I've been out here for years and. I've seen it all. It's, it's this state is ugly to me, but I don't. I got a lot of love in my heart for a lot of people, but that's about that's about all I got. As we continued to travel through the tunnels, roaches were crawling all around us. The thought of people having to lay their heads and try to sleep in the middle of all of the roaches was so disheartening. burn up their camps. The very first thing I learned about the tunnels, if someone does not want you there, they will burn all of your belongings. It's called an eviction. So these are people that just kind of pissed off somebody else. And it's time for you to go. Yeah. So that's, and I mean, that's kind of like law of the land in all the tunnels. You have to cut through. Be careful right here. So knock, knock. There is the other one, you know who it was, the other one, right? Oh, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the ones I like when Dan comes out. <clears throat> so yeah, I lived in a tunnel that was about six feet tall, about, I don't know, eight or nine feet wide. And uh, I was deep in the middle of the tunnel and it started raining. And it was one of my first experiences in the uh, flood 
like so like I really didn't know what to expect I didn't know how quickly it filled up I really wasn't aware of the environment at that point in time and so like I started gathering as much stuff as I could of course the essentials you know like uh, my backpack my drugs and batteries and peanut butter and um, the next thing you know like I'm like ankle deep in water and I start to realize you know I need to get out of here and uh, I still like couldn't really wrap my head around like the immediate sense of urgency that was there and so I keep kind of trying to collect what I thought was important at the time and by the time uh, the water was like above you know my, my feet and just like maybe a couple inches below my knee like I really didn't have any other choice so I sat down on my bed and uh, I thought that the way that my bed was designed I would be able to just sit on the bed and wait for the water to pass and that's not how it worked out like the water picked up the bed and sent me out the tunnel and I kind of rode the bed for I would have to say about a mile <laughs> underground until it, it released into the flood bank but lucky for me like it was it's for two different tunnels and the water spreads so it thins out and as soon as I got out and it thinned out I was able to get off and climb up out of the tunnel but that's one of a few experiences like you would think I learned from that situation and I didn't I actually spent time trying to gather things in the middle of other floods and I've been trapped down there several different times one time I chose to run against the water because I had left my drugs at the end of the tunnel and I thought that those were the most important things and um, I ran against the current which really wasn't the best decision <laughs> to make. Um, one time I was down there and it came so quick because it wasn't as wide as it we were used to. We had switched tunnels and the, the width was about half the width of the tunnel that we were used to living in and the mattresses came up and they dammed the water which we thought like lucky us so we decided to take our time and grab our stuff and the guy I was living with had actually wired electricity in the tunnels using car batteries and power inverters and he was an electrician and so we were grabbing those things so that we wouldn't lose our source of electricity and in the interim this water is building up behind the two mattresses that had flipped up and um, we started to hear them creak and we realized that they were about to break and so we started running as fast as we could out and the sound of the water rushing through these tunnels is indescribable like there's this echo that matches the roar of the wave that um, it's just completely fear-based especially if you've been through it a few times like you know what's coming and we were running against you know time really and trying to get out and we made it out and we were able to hook away from the tunnel just in time for everything that was behind the mattress and in front of the mattress to come pushing out. And there was like 12 or 13 grocery carts full of nonsense. All of our beds, all of our stuff came flying out behind us and the guy's like doing jumping jacks. He's like, grab our stuff. And I tried to grab one of the carts and I didn't realize he had tied them all together. And so I grabbed one and I was actually grabbing like three or four that swung and it took me down and so, so like I superman out and I let go of the carts and hit the ground and I'm like you can get your stuff I'm getting out of here you know what I mean and and, and that wasn't even like a year into this I spent three years underground and, and I have many many experiences of trying to survive and beat mother nature and eventually you learn who's boss eventually you learn like you you create a little knapsack of things that you grab when the water comes and you go and everything else is a watch no pun intended <laughs>
Be careful, the water when it sits, it becomes mossy and you will slip. Yeah, so take up your feet when you want to do it. Meet Joe. He moved to Las Vegas from California. He's looking for steady work and a second chance. Uh, I was born in California, but I've lived in Utah for uh, 10 years. And uh, I've come here and got in trouble with the law. And, you know, I got out of jail. Um, I just tried to find work and stuff. My family's all passed away. So there's no one to, you know, to give me help or anything like that. So our family goes. And I just tried to find a job and end up being down here in the tunnel for get out of the sun and you know some place to live. And every time I try to get work or whatever, it, it lasts for a week or two. And with gambling and stuff, I'm not able to get get up, you know, get a, an apartment or nothing like that. I just got a gambling problem, and uh, I don't know, I'm just kind of stuck down here. Not not able to make enough to really get out of here or not be homeless. So do you work? Um, I, I scrap um, mm -hmm. um, recyclables and stuff. I look for work. Um, I was handing out flyers for a pizza place every evening. But I, mean, but I was only making forty fifty a night. And then, you know, by the time you get something to eat and some cigarettes, and it's just, it's just hard to, you know, can't save no money, it's just basically enough to survive, which doesn't get me out of here. I'm still stuck here. Um, like you know, Tracy was saying, it's just, rent is just unbelievable. Um, and then if you got a felon, you know, hardly anybody wants to employ you. Um, just, you got, you know, construction jobs here and there, and then when I do find work, sometimes it's too far away for me to get on a bicycle or to walk. And um, I don't know, I'm just, it's just hard. Mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't found that right person or that right job to really get me out of here yet. So I just keep, keep going on the best I can every day until, you know, something new presents itself. So I'm just, just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. I'm just, they're, they're, uh, their stipulations for rent a place are just too demanding, I mean, you know, you try to check, and you can't have no, no criminal record, or, you know, there's people with criminal records, they still need a house to live in, you know. If they can make their, pay the rent, they should go to rent a house, you know, or, or an apartment or whatnot, whatnot. A lot of places will turn you down because you, you had something 15 years ago on your, on your record, or, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. I just don't understand some of it, you know. People change, you know, so what? If I have something 15 years ago on my record, um, the past 15 years of having nothing on my record should be counted, you know, I'm not that person no more. Or, um, I don't know, it, it holds your past against you a lot. And that, that makes things hard. And you make one mistake and then it's, it's with you for life. <laughs> That's exactly like the point of what we do, you know, when we go out here to these tunnels and to, to
to give them our our experience, our strengths, and our hopes, right? Um, you know, with the Freedom House, uh, like having our back on this and like doing, uh, providing beds and everything that you know we, we raise funding for. Uh, <clears throat> it kind of we, we give them a backbone to lean on the whole time. You know what I mean? Uh, and and they are able to uh, fall back to us. You know, if they get only 20, 24 hours a week, and they're all, only uh, you know not able to pay like their rent or whatever like we're not gonna kick them out you know we'll, like we'll work with them um, and figure out a solution you know what I mean and try to find them better uh, better better jobs you know we have connections within the job connect places that that will uh, get them going back into the fast track you know what I mean um, so like that's just like one of the things you know Minimum wage in Las Vegas is $8.25 an hour. That equates to $1,430 a month. With the median rent price in Las Vegas at $1,450, that doesn't leave much extra for bills, light, gas, electric, or even food. So how are people expected to survive? Or you weren't able to get full, you know what I mean, get your housing and be able to maintain that unless, you know what I mean, you have another source of income. So if you have another job. So that's, you know what I mean, that's one of the hard things we have to deal with is living in Vegas. You, If you're going to, you know, if you're coming off the streets and you haven't worked in a while, you know what I mean, your resume doesn't look all that great. You have to go, you know what I mean, you have to take what you can get. And what you can get is usually like a, you know what I mean, Burger King, Del Taco, where they're going to give you like 20 24 hours a week on minimum wage and you can't do anything with that so then you get discouraged and then those people with addictions get discouraged and kind of go back out like it was much easier to live in the tunnels it was much easier to live on the streets you know what I mean when I didn't have to pay for anything I just my expenses were food and getting drugs you know what I mean like that's and that's it and there's I don't know so it's hard it's, it's hard for them and it's hard to get past that mindset you know what I mean? Going down in there and trying to tell them, like, hey, you know what I mean? There's hope. But then it's like they've tried before and they failed every time. And it's just, I don't know. So, like, there's actually two sides of this, you know. Uh, some people qualify for impatient and some people don't, you know. Not everybody's as bad as everybody else, you know what I mean? Like, every case is individualized when it comes down to it, you know. Uh it's 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 really really crazy to be honest with you um to watch somebody watch somebody come out of the tunnels that says they want to go because this is all a volunteer base on their end um, this is all a volunteer base when they're ready to come out this isn't like hey let's go you know um this is come as come when you're ready um, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you know, like, let's go, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll get you placement and we'll get you going, you know, and uh, so far with the, the, the amount of people that we've had come out of there, we've had, a, I would want to say, 100% sex success rate with the people that have come out. Um, you know, one of the guys we cut out, he was down there for probably almost about a year down there by himself, you know, and he, he, uh, hold on one second. <laughs> so then that's what's cool about shining a light also, is that it's not like, there's no time constraints on it. We give him the card, you know what I mean? Hey, when you're ready, come talk to us. Like, if you're not ready, it's not going to work. And that's, and that's a part of the thing with the people that suffer from addiction is that if you're not ready, it's not going to work. If you have someone telling you, hey, you need to do this and this and this to get sober, then it's just... I mean, there's not a lot of a lot of people that stay sober through that. There are, you know, what I mean, there are people that go through the court systems and then, you know, what I mean, find that that way. But basically, the the success in addiction is when you're ready, when you're ready to to change your life, and when you're tired of living in the tunnels, you're tired of living, you know, what I mean, like streets. Living, you know, then you're gonna find something else, and that's what we give them a card and like, hey, when you're ready, like call. It.
We continued to travel deeper and deeper into the tunnels, passing out donation after donation. And we came across this site, which looked to me like another eviction. But Robert stated that it could have been vandalism, that the homeless get victimized often. Did they burn it? Yeah. yeah. So you can see right there, that his bed used to sit right there. See the, the, the hot bar? His bed sat right here. Somebody. Well, there's also people that come down here and vandalize shit just for no reason. And he's such a nice dude. You see our friends over here? It gets, it gets really involved sometimes, you know. Sometimes I leave here with a heavy heart, you know, and, and my, my eyes are, are watery, you know. Because um, it takes me back to, like, when I used to live down there, you know. Uh, I, I never experienced the full, the full tunnel le living situation because I was a front dweller. I would go to the front, stay there for the night, get up and go out and go do my thing for the day. But that's how, how it starts, you know. Uh, and then you get invited back into deeper into the tunnels, you know. And uh, so you lived there. I did. I didn't live as in, like I said, as deep as in the tunnels as uh, some of us are have, you know. Um, I just stayed in the front. Um, I didn't get the camaraderie, the lifestyle yet. I didn't get that false sense of hope of having four, four, well. Four, having two walls and a roof over my head, you know, it really, it, it's the truth. It's a false sense of hope, you know, because you begin to realize you can put up curtains, you can put up stuff to make it feel like it's a house, you know, uh, it protects you from the heat. It protects you from the cold. You know, when it's hot outside, it's cooler down there. When it's cold outside, it's warmer down there, you know? Uh, and that's just kind of how, how it is, you know what I mean? And, uh, the thing, the thing about it is, too, it's like an invitation only. You can't just go to a tunnel where other people are living and kind of set up camp. You know what I mean? You'll get run off really quick. You have to kind of, like, in the same way that we're building rapport, like, the other people that are living on the streets have to build some sort of rapport to be invited back deeper into the tunnel to where, you know what I mean, you get that, what Robert was talking about, the camaraderie and, you know what I mean, safety. Then we came back down this tunnel. We were right about right here when we heard this. And we didn't know what it was. And we were like, we both kind of looked at each other and like, all right, this is what it is. And it was this little tunnel right here. I think it was this one or the next one. It was around the bend. You hear that? Yeah. That's, that's the cause. Yes. So it was actually wind pulling leaves in and we thought it was somebody on a bicycle because that's what it sounded like really yeah dude it was oh my gosh because they Talked were dry me. leaves the way they were hitting the ground it sounded like smokes right like the back double yep like 
I saw that on Expedition Unknown last year. Yeah, those are slag tights because they hang on tight. And the ones growing up from the ground, like you can see them kind of start, but there's too much foot traffic for them to ever build, are called slag mites because they're mighty. That's how you remember it. Mighty grows up, tighty holds on tight. Slag tight, slag mite. Yeah, you're good. Like this is the life of it, you know what I mean? Like this is. I know you're going to need some jelly shots, but I do want to try to come on the floor. Just want to try to do it. Well, it's funny, but I can first show you from the back now. I think it's all bad. It's all bad. How did I finish it for three years? I don't know. I'm going to be in here for a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Because that's the only place it could come from. Really wet, though. It's really weird. Soft. It's hoping for the rocks. They're not. That's not rocks. I mean, sand. Well, whatever it is, We couldn't figure out exactly what it was we were stepping on, whether they were rocks or sands. I just knew whatever it was, it was really sharp. And I couldn't imagine someone having to lie there and sleep and make that their bed. Um, Josie Stellino. I came to the tunnel so I was robbed. When I met Josie, moved to Las Vegas from Arizona. She had found herself in a bad spot, but she was making the best of it. I was robbed of all my belongings purposely and so someone was trying to keep me down for sure so i stayed down and i'm still down and I'm not hoeing it out I'm not stripping it up so i'm trying to maintain some sort of frequency if you will stay as sane as possible if people are trying to make sure you know the worst on you i didn't know people were like gonna do all this but that's how i feel kind of attacked in a sense where are you from? But I'm also a sociopath, but a lot of us are nowadays, unfortunately. Where are you from? I'm from Arizona. Arizona. What brought you to Las Vegas? <laughs> a lot of things, I think. I didn't know it was such a big city so close to where I'm from. Because I'm from AZ and I've never been to Vegas until like eight months ago, a year ago. So, like, my family never let me know about Vegas or anything. So, I thought it was kind of weird being it's like one of the major cities. I'm a conspiracist by any means. Um, I would definitely say these are storage units, these are not like homeless tunnels. That's my theory on it. I don't know. I could be wrong. How long have you lived in this tunnel? Or like pyramid squares or something. Um, like four months, probably. But it's free. I mean, I'm cool with that. It's washing up's a bit hard, but uh, whatever, I'll get used to it. I'm from AZ where there's like lakes and stuff, so it's a lot easier to maintain. So how did you find yourself? Down in the tunnel. Um, so I'm actually uh, I'm in recovery. Um, I'm just gonna put that out there. You know, I, I started out using drugs when I was like 11 years old. To 11 years old, um, I stuck a needle in my arm by the time I was 12, and so I, w I was running and gunning already. You know, and uh, so you know, it, like any addiction, people get fed up with you. You burn your bridges. You're not allowed in certain places. You can't do what you used to do and get away with what you used to get away with, you know? Um, and so eventually I had nowhere to go, nowhere to turn, nowhere to do anything. And so I, I started sleeping on the streets, you know? Uh, and during the summertime, it'd get really freaking hot, like first thing in the morning, you know? And I wanted to actually try to sleep, you know? And uh, so I, I would, I, would, I found that there's a cooler place right there, like right in the shadows of the tunnels, you know, you just go down and start going down a little deep and 
probably like 10, 15 feet in, you know, where you can still see the, the light right there, you know, and, and you would, I, I would sleep, man, you know, um, I would wake up in the morning and feel refreshed and be able to hit the, hit the streets running again, you know, um, the concrete felt really good on my body, uh, it's just one of those things, I, I'm, I'm a, I, I feel like I'm a generator, I always produce heat, um, and so, that's that's kind of like how it started out you know um like i was sharing with you earlier I, I had moved to tennessee and the reason i moved to tennessee to be with family was to try to get away from the drugs and the alcohol um and as soon as i got there nothing changed because i wasn't really really willing to change i just wanted to get away from the methamphetamines you know uh, and then i ended up transitioning over to just straight drinking all the time you know and uh so that's why I played the cat and cat and mouse in that time frame, and you know I'd go from being out there to come, coming back out here, and then going back out there immediately. Because as soon as I'd get back here, I was right back down into the streets, just like that. Nothing like if nothing even changed, like right back and doing the same thing, same people, same places. And uh, through that time frame, you know I. Uh, I found some depths, you know. I, I'm I'm really grateful for for those cops, you know, that arrested me that day. I was, I was completely obliviated out of my mind and uh, yelling at shadows walking down the street because I thought it was people that were chasing me. And uh, it's like the Jimmy Johns didn't think that it was. Uh, they, they didn't think it was too good that I was running down the street yelling at people. And so, uh, I, uh, got pulled up on and they asked me if I had any warrants and at the time I did and I told them no and went back to the car and I was like, actually, as a matter of fact, I do, let's go. You know, like I was over it. I was done. I didn't want to do this anymore, you know? Like I didn't know that at that time and then as soon as I got into, like, as soon as I got into the cell, I was cussing everybody out, and I didn't want to be there because now I had restrictions on me, you know. Uh, it took a little bit of time to recuperate, you know. I, I They actually put me through a drug court program, and uh, that's, that's where the journey began in my recovery. I didn't know what, exactly what I wanted. I knew I wanted to change, but I just didn't want to feel the way I felt anymore, and now... I understand that, and that's why I try to go and give back to the people that are out here, you know? Show, share my experience, my strengths, and my hopes, and, and continue to show up and tell them the same thing over and over and over again. Because the, the, the longer you continue to sh tell them the same story, the more believable it is, you know? When, when they see the truth and they, they trust you and they can feel that, that heart to heart with you, you know. I love that. Alright, so we destroyed the kid. It's super important to at least be able to relate to them on some degree. You know, especially going down here, like, the majority of people going down here are, you know what I mean, are in recovery. Right? They don't, their story is their story. It's just, it is what it is. And that's, I mean, it's something relatable. We can talk to them from a standpoint. If not, like, we're above you. Like, we know where you've been. You know what I mean? Like, we've been homeless. We've been in jails. We've been in prisons. You know what I mean? We've 
we've done what you've done. We've stuck needles in our arms. Like, you know what I mean? All this stuff that that has this, this giant stigma on it. You know what I mean? It's like we can go and level with them. Like, hey, you know what I mean? Like, we're not trying to talk to them from a point of being higher. We're, you know what I mean? We've been there. So we just talk to them. Like, you know what I mean? We share some of things. our stories. And the more stories we share, the more they realize, like, these guys have been where we've been and they know what we're talking about. It's a, home, it's a homeless place then, but, you know, it's our house. Meet Tommy. He and his wife moved to Las Vegas all the way from Hawaii. They are currently in search and in need of housing. You remember? I mean, look at it. You know, what we're just doing was sweeping. It's all We sweep. See, but once you go on that side of the, of the board or whatever, yeah, he's there stripping wire and doing the, the other side of the homelessness thing. Is he back from we, don't, we don't do that. I, I don't. I mean, she don't. Yeah, no, we don't. We don't take it. We don't do that, bro. I mean, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just not saying I'm good. I'm just saying that's just not what we do. I rather. I don't know, man. We're on a list. We're waiting for housing. It's kind of really. Yeah. How long have we been waiting? It's been about six months, maybe. And uh, really we're getting close on the list. I mean, it kind of sucks because there are some people from here that got apartments, lost it due to having 12 people in their apartment, putting holes in the wall, not giving a shit about nothing, about nothing at all. And then we get kicked out, and then they get them another apartment like the next day. It's like, wow, okay, so we're still on the list, but this guy got two, you know what I mean? It's like, wow, wow. And he don't appreciate nothing at all. Look, but well, we'll fix up a tunnel. What can we do with an apartment? You know what I'm saying? She That's what I got out of here in 2007. Whatever. I mean, it just doesn't yeah, seem, it yeah. seems kind of weird. Uh, and then now he's then got to out of his second apartment and he's yeah. going to try and get a third one yeah. before we even get one. So it's like, oh, where's the justice? The quickest way to bring you down is well, I guess, you know, there's different programs and different uh, funding. He's in a program called HUD, and I guess their funding has got a lot of money right now, so I, 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 mean, I think we're on the same program. I'm not even sure. I'm not sure how it works. All I know is there's people that do, um, you know, they do assessments on, on, on you, and I don't really you know how you assess homelessness, but they do. And uh, fuck, they, they said, oh, we didn't score that high, so we're low on the list. I said, score high? What? Wait, I'm trying to understand what that means. Like, how do you score low or high in a homelessness situation? I mean, it's like, really, I don't understand it, and I really don't want to understand it. I just want the same chance and help they give me the other If given the chance, I know we will appreciate it and not screw up in fact. It is what it is. Uh, 
you know. I can find my big flashlight. Hey, uh, just Jake, you have chasing a the dream, I guess. Right. Okay. Chasing cool. the dream of being rich. So I, I got some, uh, and, oh, more uh, being rich. And not it's working not hard. Three. I suppose. Perfect. You know what I mean? Awesome, the awesome. free ride. I don't know. Pull a, pull a, a handle yeah. or push a button and get the jackpot for all that money is, I guess, the dream, I suppose. Addiction, it's a real messy, ugly thing. It comes in many forms. There's drug addiction, there's gambling addiction, there's food addiction, there's it's like the whole, your whole life is just going to be full of, a, you know, choices that you make, I guess, you know what I mean? I choose to be an addicted person to everything that's bad for me. Why can't I be addicted to work? You guys go lose right? Or addicted to saving money. You know? I'm addicted to spending it as fast as I can get it, as fast as I'll spend it. She's a saver. She fix up. She's a crafter, you know, so she does crafts. That's what she does. This guy knows. He, they were here last time, right? That's what she does. She writes all this. Fear God. She, tell me why you see that. You see that right there? Can you guys tell me what that is? You guys got mustache? You got mustache? What is it? Anyway, what do you have to do? Honestly, it's greater than I. That's right. house in the prairie. You know, if you want water, to take a shower, to drink, cool. to, you gotta go get it. Right. You wanna use Thanks the bathroom? Okay. You have to go use the bathroom. There's you no running water, talk. there's yeah, no electricity. Nice you have to make, man. you wanna warm up right? some food or cook some food? Soon. You have to make a fire. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, stuff. you have to get the wood. Yeah, you have to, it's hard work, man. Uh, this is Byron. Found himself in Las Vegas all the way from Philadelphia. His wife brought him here to clear his head and he's been living in the tunnels ever since. I came down, I, I can't talk about that right, in car on me, uh, my children, so I can't talk about that. Okay, where are you from? South Philadelphia. Wow, how did you end up in Las Vegas? My wife brought me here to clear my head up and I ended up meeting some real people down here, so I stayed to help. And that I've done. So, I had some. Now it's. I'm sorry, I didn't even come back. I did. I got to. The reason why I'm here is because of my children. And I lost my kids, so. And it's. It's not better, though. It's kept me alive, it gave me something to live for. It, and I know my kids are happy with what I'm doing, so. And I'm going to probably continue it until as much as people get help. Yeah, was that somebody in the back? Huh? Was that somebody yelling in the back? I don't know who the hell it is. I heard him. I just heard him. Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, my mother, 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 my I got a secret from Marvel Park. Right. Um, hey, Park. Yeah. 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 Y
hundred thousand gallons of water comes through that tube right there. And it gushes out in that wall and comes right out. And that's why it's all right here. It goes out and you go. This way it comes out. You would want to wash your clothes up my hand. In the gallery, the walls were covered from top to bottom in paint and graffiti and artwork and it was so beautiful and the work was so amazing and it had to have been done by flashlight, by candlelight, however it was created. It takes a special artist to be able to create such beauty in the dark and pitch black. No way for the next one, so we go to the top. But it's all clear, you see it too. It's not the right one. But it's all clear, it's in the water. I want to drink it. <laughs> but hey, that's some clear water. Okay, turn it over to the bathroom. You get back there, you wash your body off. Well, it's the same for here, for the people that go out by the sun. This is all the big tunnels for all of them. And then you just do the water, and you just do the water, and you just do the water, and you just do the water. Oh, yeah. This is the old break room for season. This is the old break room. I can't go there and there's only two steps over there. I'll go in the back. I took the chain up and I went all the way down to the end of the back and walked up to the hill. So we beat me. And I thought I lost it. And that, that, that hurt. But you know, she was somewhere else. There was another 33 year old young lady who so. That it was her that was going for our band, but we didn't even get to her so time. She'd stay playing with them. It's great. That's horrible. No, he's no. Hey, that's, that's horrible, bro. Let's see what the pH levels are. Yeah. You got a catch or catch? Yeah. They're getting water here. Oh, yeah, I thought. Yeah. My feet are on the left, though. Oh, yeah. Red water. It's just cold water. Go ahead. Look at that. You get some help. I don't get some help. Anything else you want to add? Never give up. Mm -hmm.